Miles Garrett, I think, I think it's worth bringing up at least and the defensive player of the year conversation. Miles Garrett has been unreal all year. And at the beginning of the year, we talked about it. The moves made on this defensive line, bringing in Zadarius Smith, bringing in Oboe Gronquo, uh, has helped him out massively. And you use the secondary in the right way, have them in man. You can trust those guys to buy time for that front four to get there. And Miles Garrett has had one of, if not the most productive year he's ever had in the NFL. Today, I feel like Miles really did nothing. I, I feel like he was more of a big name on the field than anything, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all to Miles. That's just, to me, a testament how great the Texans game plan for him, right? We've seen Miles Garrett be neutralized by teams like the Steelers, um, and then other times you have like the Bengals who would just be like, oh, well, he's another player, good luck. And today, I think the Texans absolutely, um, you know, just shut him down and made him a non-factor. When it comes to the Defensive Player of the Year, obviously, this is a year-long award. And this is a more than just one game thing. Um, you know, but based on what we've seen from Miles today, do you think that has changed at all? I mean, what? No, no. I, I mean, <clears throat> the issue today wasn't miles on the line. Like, for, for me, like, you know, the whole, like, second half of the season, NFL officiating is really cranked down or not cranked down and let go of holding a lot. And you see it all over the league, like Micah Parsons, Max Crosby, um, uh, Daniel Hunter, like guys, guys like that have been getting held for the past like half of the season, uh, and just teams are getting away with it. Um, and when you look at what the Texans did to neutralize Miles, um, they pretty much made it impossible for him as an individual to succeed today. So, like a, every single play, there was chips. There was double teams, not like that, but they've they've got Laramie Tunsil, man, and Laramie Tunsil, he's a legit All Pro level left tackle. I thought he got disrespected by being left off of the All Pro list because um, for me, he was one of the top two left tackles in the NFL this year, um, and I feel like he proved that in that game. He had a great game, and especially after being hurt and coming back, like that's just resilience by him, um, the resilience that we had seen on our side of the ball. The, the whole year um and the texans had it today i mean they were banged up coming into this one their whole defensive line i don't think any of them practiced until like thursday or friday um you know a lot of players for them were banged up and injured and hurt they came out and they brought it to us so um to answer the question no i think i think if we go back and uh you know, is this a good game from Miles? A, a, a great game? No, obviously not. Um, but I don't. He, he, let me say this: it wasn't so bad that it should change our minds as far as what his regular season was. It, you know, it, it wasn't that mm-hmm. bad. Like I just think he didn't have a chance today. Um, but yeah, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts about like like that? You know, obviously. Again, I'm almost certain all the all the votes are already counted, and it's a regular season award, so this should not count towards it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what what are your thoughts and stuff like that? I mean, the reason why I bring it up is because I think I don't know. Like I said, fans will, and th- I think this is more so fans, but this also leaks over into the media aspect. People will overreact to one game. You know, they'll overreact to one game, right? If you ask some people on the street right now random fans like what do you think about cj stroud there are people who would legitimately legitimately say hey this guy is one of the best top three quarterbacks in the nfl right now and i'm not disagreeing saying he could get there i mean absolutely he can but like that would be an immediately overreaction to having a really good game that's kind of how i feel with miles right now and this is why i bring up the question is because i think Based on how people react, I, I could see people 
taking this game and saying he didn't make an impact he didn't do anything like why is this guy gonna be dpoy um but to your point what miles has done this season has been incredible for multiple different reasons um and i think you shouldn't take away from him what he's done this year based on this game but i definitely if he does get it which i do think he should and same thing with kevin right same thing with kevin and coach of the year um if they get it or one of them gets it don't be surprised if you hear why what did he do why you know why was he given this they got blown out against the texans and that's completely unwarranted and unfair to judge somebody based on one game but well if we were going to judge somebody for one game we should say that you know D'Amico Ryans has no business being in the coach of year conversation because the Browns absolutely smoked him in the regular season and it's a regular season war but we're not saying that we're yeah. saying even with that loss he's still in that running absolutely he's number two candidate uh number one or number two for some people it's one or the other and I can't blame people who put D'Amico Ryans above Kevin Stefanski because the job he's done has been spectacular but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But I, I definitely think both, for both of them, it is, it'll is it be interesting just on the reaction side of things. But um, let's, let's transition here. 